اللهم لا مانع لما أعطيت ولا ولا ينفع ذا الجد منك الجد لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه له النعمة وله الفضل والفناء والحسن وهو على كل شيء قدير لا إله إلا الله مخلصين له السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن والاه الحمد لله it's good to see all of you uh, again it's good to be home again some of you knew some of you didn't know where I was but uh, I'll let some of you know before I left I was away for about two weeks. It's a program that I do every year for the past 15 years or so in the Adirondack Mountains where we do intensive learning and intensive amal of obedience of Allah Azza wa Jal for about 10 days. And it is attended, um, it's limited, but it is attended by uh, brothers and sisters, students from uh, all different parts of the country and Canada and, and from other places overseas as well, inshallah ta'ala, in which uh, every day and every night it's uh, highly um, loaded program of practicing and of learning uh, things that we speak about sometimes that we need to do. We're there not only to speak about but to do. We spend about four to five, four, four hours about every day of learning and the rest of 18 and uh, 19 hours a day and a night, it's practicing. Uh, the emphasis is to uh, promote uh, the ways by which we change our hearts and souls and our character and our akhlaq as Allah Azza wa and His Rasul require from us. Um, I hope, inshallah ta'ala, that um, in the future, uh, some more of you from Texas will, uh, will, will take part of that. It's, it is limited. It's, we can only accept about 50 to 60 people every year. Um, and we are selective. They, first of all, apply for that, and then we see how we accept those, inshallah ta'ala. It has always been very, very special. And um, Allah Azza wa has gifted us bi'ithni Azza wa with many special uh, uh, blessings during those days of the year bi'ithni Azza wa uh, Now, having said that, so that you know where I was, in case you didn't know some of you, it's good to be back to continue um, as what uh, we have been learning together. At that moment, those two days that I spent there, it was simply an intensive practice and learning about what we learn here gradually and slowly as well inshallah ta'ala but it is always good to have a khalwa time of quality time for three days for a week for ten days for kara quality time khalwa in learning and in practicing inshallah ta'ala for those who have the drive inside to want to be nearer to Allah azza wa jal and to want to change inside so that the obedience to Allah Azza wa Jal becomes steadfast and easier for us, inshaAllah ta'ala. Having said that, of what we recited tonight, قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى وَإِسْتَنْبِئُونَكَ أَحَقٌ هُوْ قُلْ إِي وَرَبِّي إِنَّهُ لَحَقُ وَمَا أَنْتُمْ بِمُعْجِزِينَ Now this question that human beings always ask, and human beings forget, and human beings don't know, and human beings sometimes are rebellious and tyrannical. Sometimes you ask questions because you truly don't know. Sometimes you ask questions to ridicule. Sometimes you ask questions to show off. Sometimes you ask questions to demean. And the question of does life after the hereafter exist has been like that. Especially in modern times, nowadays, there are those who uh, ask the question to ridicule, ask the question in rebelliousness, and so on. And there are those who ask the question 
out of genuine desire to know. And this question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has always, always emphatically spoken about and answered throughout the Quran and throughout the life and words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So here he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he records for us this, these questions that some ask to know, some ask to rebel, some ask to ridicule, etc. وَيَسْتَنْبِئُونَكَ أَحَقٌ هُ and they ask of thee, they require, they require of thee answer to the question. Ahakun who? Is it really true? That is life after death and the day of resurrection and judgment and hereafter. Ahakun who? Allah says to Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say, Qul ee, ee, wa rabbi. By my Lord, innahu lahaq, verily it is true. وَمَا أَنْتُمْ بِمُعْجِزِينَ And you cannot do anything about it. Let's put it this way. وَمَا أَنْتُمْ بِمُعْجِزِينَ And you cannot do anything about it. And you cannot stop it in all this question of ridicule and this question of rebelliousness and this challenge and this... Uh, يعني, ignorant, foolish, arrogant, tyrannical audacity on your part with, that you feel you have, none of that will stop it. وَمَا أَنْتُمْ بِمُعْجِزِينَ وَلَوْ أَنَّ لِكُلِّ نَفْسٍ ظَلَمَتْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ لَفْتَتَتْ بِهَا And on that day, if any soul would possess every treasure on earth, Assume somebody possessed all earth and resources of earth and the seas of earth and everything was his or hers. And all the power that comes with that. And that nafs was a transgressing nafs. That person lived in this dunya, one who rejected the divine, one who rejected Allah, one who rejected the values that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recommended for us and ordered us to live by any of those if we do that especially those who reject that in totality and perhaps dhulm here is shirk and kufr and also the other levels of dhulm that on that day if such a person would come with all of that power and wealth that he owned on that day he would wish he would be given the opportunity and the chance to give all that up in ransom for being saved from the justice of that day and therefore from the torment upon such a person. وَلَوْ أَنَّ لِكُلِّ نَفْسٍ ظَلَمَتْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ لَفْتَدَتْ بِهِ And they cannot. And it is حق. إِي وَرَبِّي إِنَّهُ لَحَق my dear brothers and sisters we live in times and we live in conditions and circumstances and especially especially so, you know I was away in these two weeks I was in, in the wilderness you, know, you see trees and nature and it's, it's all it helps you one of them said one of the participants said look you know he spoke to about someone about you know a non-muslim friend and you know who had some personal experiences and and you know he was in, in this very serene place in, in, in Canada and alone and and he told him about where he was, I was in that jungle of concrete. We live many of us live in jungles of concrete. And when you see concrete and steel and wires all the time and cars all the time and all the time like that, that does not go without impacting us inside that does not go without impacting us inside we become rougher we become obscured from certain moral, ethical and spiritual realities we need to ponder and Allah Azza wa Jal tells us to ponder. And whatever, 
in the midst of steel and concrete and wires all the time and screens all the time, it's not quality environment for pondering the realities of life and the realities of death. And yet Allah wants us to remember that very frequently. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, أَكْثِرُوا مِنْ ذِكْرِ هَذِ مِنْ لَذَّاتِ الْمَوْتِ do very frequently remember and ponder the destroyer of appetites and passions, death. And we need that quality time. And then there will be only regret and remorse when punishment is real. Now Allah says, أَلَا إِنَّ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَلَا إِنَّ وَعْدُ اللَّهِ حَقُّ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And this life for which we compete so treacherously and so sometimes animalistically predatory ways of competitions in this dunya with one another and with others and the conflicts we invent and we create against one another and the rudeness with all of that, all of that and for what? Allah says, all that that you want to earn, all of that is Allah's. Ala inna lillahi ma fi samawati wal ard. Verily, to Allah belong all that which is in heavens and on earth. It's His. Don't, don't act as though it is all yours and, and you kill for it and you cheat for it and you backbite for it and you hate for it and you lie for it and, and you cheat for it and... أَلَا إِنَّ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ That is his, his your only stewards. أَلَا إِنَّ وَعَدَ اللَّهِ حَقَّ And then with that, the promise of Allah is true for in this life and after this life. وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ However, most of them do not know. Most of us human beings do not know. And yet what happens, we follow those who don't know at the expense of those who know. Most human beings do not know about these essential matters of life and death and realities and the essential realities, haqa'iqu hadhi al-haya and the essential realities of after death. Most do not know. Most follow only conjecture and yet we give in to those like that as to what our life should be and what our style of life should be so we have nowadays young people and not so young people influenced by these who don't, do not know to reject the values of modesty and the ra- values of morality and the values of spirituality and the values of tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal and the values of accountability in this dunya and in akhirah. وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And he says, هُوَ يُحْيِي وَيُمِيتُ وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ Again emphasizing the reality of life after death. هُوَ يُحْيِي وَيُمِيت Not because we see life and we see death and those who don't believe think this is simply casual. So he says, this phenomenon of life that you see all around you, now you go study in biology, and molecular biology, and physics, and kada, and then you have your own recipes for that, and your own conclusions of that. And those who say there is no beginning, and there is no end, and life is coincidence, and this and death is coincidence, he answers that question everywhere, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huwa. Not coincidence, not you. Huwa. He starts with this. It is He, Allah, who yuhi, who, in other words, controls the process of life because it's an active form. Not only He gives life, but He gives life and controls the processes of life and living where you meet. And death is not just coincidence and somebody dies or something dies. It is He who does that. It is He who controls life, living, death and dying. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huwa yuhi who you meet. Look around you. And then you will come back to Him. 
and you will come back to him وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ هكذا Allah Azza wa Jal, my dear sisters and brothers reminds us everywhere in the Quran about that and it is good always to remind each other as we're doing here reminding myself first and then you and with this I tell you uh, let us strive to find quality time alone if not in, in nature without concrete trees and concrete things and steel things and wire things and we can't escape into a place of just natural things if you can't do that in your own home in a masjid take time for quality reflection for quality pondering the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you recite and our relationship with him subhanahu wa ta'ala and the moment we will all leave this dunya and we won't leave it except abruptly it is good to prepare for that daily and regularly daily and regularly hopefully when our moment comes we leave happy to leave this dunya we leave happy to leave this dunya and to encounter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in a state of certitude in a state of yaqeen not in a state of doubt of one does it exist or does it not exist what is going to happen to me is it true or not I just heard Oh, I learned. I pray to myself and to all my brothers and sisters that that's not the state in which we die. That we die in a state of yaqeen. Allah marzuqna barda al-yaqeen. Allah marzuqna sidqa al-yaqeen. Ya Rabbi, Ya Rahman Ar-Rahmin. Wa salli Allahumma wa sallim ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammadin wa ala alihi al-tahirin wa ashabihi al-mayameen. Tabi'ina lahum bi ihsanin ila yawm al-deen. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته